one of those incredibly frustrating articles whereby I have no real problem. In fact, I agree, and yet there are many points in which I go... So, I'm not looking here to sort of uh, overthrow your foundations or anything, Inglefer. It's more, I'm looking for clarity for myself, and, you know, maybe almost a little bit, little bit more, you know, like a great rock star. Give us some more. Can you tell me some more? So, first of all, um, the first thing that I thought was what I think is incredibly valuable. And I haven't read this paper you gave today. I read two papers which are on the same basic theme, the development. And it's, it's interesting to see them develop. But with what you're working on at the moment, it seems to me, your main aim is to, to show an, an annoyance at what you view as an overly simplistic diagnosis of um, why, why we can't bring about any form of change. Basically to show complexity, to show the relationship between post-ecology and post-ecological thinking and with post-democracy, to basically show that they are mutually sustaining, I would say. Um, your argument, your criticism is, you know, in an interesting way, if I can use uh, sort of the Zizek line, it's, your, the question is, is it due to uh, subjugation, uh, sub people being dominated, or is it due to emancipation? Yes. You know, it's both. It, it's, you can't have one <coughs> without the other there. And it's sort of putting your emphasis now is almost much more as being put on, un we need to understand that emancipatory element, the element by which it is the element by which it is the notion of subjectivity, how it is changed, then sustains uh, these new post-democratic forms. So my questions then, I want to start off with some sort of theoretical abstract questions, move on to some activist style questions, because you explicitly say, have said, you know, it's not about activism, so I want to ask you about activism. And then some empirical ref hat, put on your ref hat, empirical questions. So. Uh, on the first one, I'm very interested in this notion of this change in subjectivity. I'm interested, within your notions, you have this idea of the desire for uh, a... With the new social movements has come this new form of subjectivity, which is about self-realization. And with this has come a desire to sort of no, to no longer be held down by these Kantian uh, categorical imperatives, to instead to be open to all possibilities, almost, shall we say. And this means we like uh, this uh, simulative democracy whereby we, we go to the meetings and we all go, oh, climate change is terrible. Yes, climate change is terrible. Something must be done. It must be done. The scientists will tell us. And we go, yes, the scientists will tell us. Brilliant. Well, thank God something's being done, you know. And my question is, first of all, if I can use the word ideology, um, how do you view the relationship of these, these subjects? Is it some old sort of Marxist idea of they do not know it, but they're doing it? Or is it more, again, more the Zizekian, although I know very well what I am doing, I am still doing it. Do we know in our heart of hearts that this is a simulation of democracy? Or are we still somehow hiding behind that? I'm interested in that idea. I'm also interested in sort of how autonomous, you keep saying we, we talk about the old autonomous subject, sort of kind of uh, Cartesian, notion of the ability to act. And I'm interested how much autonomy does this new, you've in your work talked about the Bauman and the liquid subjectivity. How, how autonomous is this autonomous? You know, to what extent can there be change? Because reading this, it almost sounds like this is even worse than what I've been told before, because it's not only that we have an elite dominating us, you know, that's an element, but it's also we like it and we want to sustain it. I mean, like, you know, this is my God, this is sort of what, so I suppose my third, getting on to the uh, you know, to quote Comrade Lenin, what is to be done, you know, or more, what can be done. Um, sort of in your explanations, what possibilities do you identify? And you started to get onto this at the end. You had the quote, we can begin to explore what an eco-politics outside of the norms will look like. And I'm, I was kind of interested in how far you've gone down that route and if you can give us any teasers uh, to that. Um, otherwise, if things are so bad that we have the elite structures and we have this, this sense of subjective emancipation, that it's almost like the, the circle continues to eat itself. Are we, are we waiting for the collapse? I mean, you're, you're, we're talking about the sustainability of the unsustainable. Well, surely, the, how exactly, how unsustainable is sustaining the unsustainable? This whole project is going to collapse at some point. That's sort of, 
<laughs> you know, so are we waiting for the, you know, an experience of the real? Are we waiting for the collapse, the breakdown? Are we living in the end times and it's only when it all goes wrong we go, well, now we have to accept this is going to happen. So it's sort of, or is there some sort of struggle we can be doing that, which brings back the notion of autonomy? How active and autonomous can we be in there? Do we have to wait till the dragons are breathing fire on us till we, I don't know, I have to think of a metaphor there uh, for you. Sure, okay. Is there any form of active struggle or do we have to wait until sort of uh, agony actually happens before we can have any form of agonism? Hey. My next question, and it's a small one here, was you uh, talked about what's, you know, your object is to gain a rich understanding of what's driving the change, etc. Because um, you had, you, you did the clever thing of going, some people will say that surely this is just about, you know, capitalism, you know, late modernity, shall we say. And yeah, that's one of my questions was to an extent, um, if that is a possibility, you, you talk about modernization processes. And I was wondering, is this modernization or is it, oh dear God, post-modernization alongside post-ecology and post-democracy? Because modernization is surely too much factories, too solid. You know, this is, everything has already melted into air. Uh, the consumer is individualist, etc. And I was wondering about your terminology of modernization. And finally, to kind of finish up, if I may, um, the empirical element. Uh, you, you've said that you know, now is the time to, we've done the theory, now we need to sort of uh, get into some sort of research sort of element. My question is, how do you see the possibility of going about this? When we're, when, when we're in the realm of subjectivity, of ideology, or if you don't want to use that term, or the, of, of sort of power structures in these manners, what is, how do we operationalize any of the things which were being identified here? How do we, is it, are we polling people to find their ideals, to see how they're reacting to this? What are the variables? I don't know. I just feel I need to throw that out there as well, uh, to put on a different hat. And that is, that is all. Otherwise, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.